Good morning, church. It's Monday morning. Take your Bibles. And I want you to go to a passage that we're going to be looking at in just a moment in Luke chapter number 16. Luke chapter number 16. And it's the story of Lazarus and the rich man. And we're going to be talking about what happens after death. The 10th most asked question is, what happens to a person after they die? Now, that surprises me that it's number 10 because uh, I would think that that would be up there in, in, in one of the top ones. Uh, you know, what happens to us when we die? But people are more concerned about some of these other issues, such as uh, women pastors. Uh, should they pastor the church? And is homosexuality a sin against God? Uh, because those are things that are in the now and now. But I would think a person's eternal soul would be very important to them. And so to me, I would think they would be asking that question above all else. What happens after death? And it is a question that is widely debated even among those who claim to be Christian. There are some who claim that when you die, anyone, everyone who dies, they just go to the grave and their soul goes to sleep. They just are there. It's like going to sleep at night. And then you don't wake up until the day of judgment. And it may be thousands of years. So when Paul died, he ceased to uh, exist in a sense. He's just in a grave. He's just asleep right now. His soul is sleeping. And one of these days, there's going to come a time of judgment when God will wake up everybody and then he will decide this one goes to hell, this one goes to heaven, and then we'll go to their eternal homes at that point. There are others who, uh, who claim that when, when you die, immediately you are judged. So your judgment, that's the judgment day, that you are judged at that moment, and then you are assigned to heaven if you're judged good, if you've done enough good works, you've done good things, you're judged and you are in heaven. If at your death, however, you have committed a mortal sin uh, or you have uh, not done enough good works or you have forsaken the faith in some way, when you die or you're of another faith and, or you don't believe in God at all, you are going to hell. And so that moment you go to hell, your judgment has just been taken. Neither one of those are what the Bible teaches. What the Bible teaches is that at your death, you go to a place that you await a day of judgment. Now, when I say you, I'm talking about your soul and your spirit. Go to that place. And you either go to a place uh, that we're going to see here in this story is a place of torments, and that's what he calls it, a place of torments, and that's where the rich man goes. And he goes to that place, and one of these days, he will be brought out according to Revelation chapter 20, and then he will be judged. Now, his eternal destiny is already sealed. He rejected God's plan of salvation. He rejected, as we would say it today, he rejected Jesus as his Lord. Therefore, he's going to go to hell. But his day of judgment has not yet come. It will come at the great white throne judgment. Revelation chapter number 20. For the believer, if you were to die right now, your body would go to the grave and it would sleep. Your body would remain without life. It would sleep. It would be there motionless. It may even deteriorate back to the dust of the earth. But your soul and spirit will go to heaven and you would be there with God. And when Jesus Christ comes again at the rapture of the church, when he comes to receive the church unto himself, then right after the rapture of the church, this is uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4 and in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, when that all happens, then you will be judged at what is called the judgment seat of Christ and you'll receive rewards. You're your eternal destiny was already determined. You would receive Jesus as your Lord, you're born again, and therefore you're going to go to heaven. But then comes your judgment at that time, the judgment seat of Christ. And then after that uh, time, then we come back to the earth and we're going to live on the earth eventually. Now let me just give you again the scripture here. 
Here's what Jesus said. Then there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar whose name was Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came to lick his sores, and it, was, it came to pass that the beggar died, and he was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. That's a temporary holding place. And the rich man also died and was buried. And being the rich man, being in torments in Hades, lifted up his eyes and he saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And so, uh, I don't believe I may have called this a, earlier a parable. And I, I didn't mean to, but if I did. I don't believe this is a parable. I believe this is Jesus talking about literally two individuals who lived at the same time in the same town who even knew one another. And that one goes to a place of waiting. The other went to a place of torments. Both of them were waiting the day of judgment according to the remainder of scriptures. Now, uh, if you were to die today as a Christian, the moment you die, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The Lord is in heaven right now. He's in His Father's house. And you would go to be with Jesus the moment you die. Your body would go to the grave. And then when the resurrection happens, at the return of Christ in the rapture, not really the return, but the rapture of the church, when Christ comes for His bride, God will create you a brand new body, 1 Corinthians 15, and your body will be raised from the dead. Your soul and spirit, which were already with Jesus if you've died, then it will join your body. Your body will be perfect. You'll be perfectly healthy. Your soul is perfect. Your spirit is God's spirit, has raised you, and therefore you will be body, soul, and spirit perfect. And you will dwell with Jesus throughout all eternity. So that's what happens after death. It is important that you acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord repenting and turning away from sin and selfishness, renouncing Satan, and that you serve Jesus, that you be born again, because only those who are born again are going to get to enter the kingdom of heaven. When death happens, you don't get a second chance. There's, there's no repeats, no do-overs, no mulligans. It's already determined. So today, is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Make sure you are prepared for death. And the only way to be prepared for death is to trust in Jesus, who lived a perfect, sinless life, died for the sins of the world, and rose again to overcome death's penalty. Let's pray together. Father, we do thank you. We love you. We praise you for the salvation that you provided for us through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all, in his holy name we pray, amen.